All right, welcome back everyone to Let's Play Out of the Park Baseball 19 with the Chicago White Sox. We have reached opening day 2021, and we begin opening day with the trade, actually. I feel like um, Giolito, he, um, he's just no longer uh, good for the team anymore, and he hasn't really pitched well for us since uh, 2018. He suffered an injury, and now he's fragile. He's only one and a half rate stars rated as a starting pitcher, and he's 26. Um, and he's, you know, costing us uh, the spot on the 40 man basically at this point. And his spring training was poor. So um, I decided I'm going to trade him away, and we're going to also send away. Um, I think I'd like to send away. There was a relief pitcher. Yes, okay. Just as a throw in, this guy to the Rangers for uh, Thomas Dillard, who was their third round pick in 2019. Looks like an all right ish catching prospect, not necessarily, uh, you know, Shea Langelius type, but uh, pretty good nonetheless. So we are going to go ahead and do that trade to start everything off. Okay, we are back with a trade that, uh, probably surprising, but uh, we're going to trade away Joshua Kimmy here. Uh, it's kind of a bummer. But his, uh, his ratings have just kind of come down a bit. And if you look at his um, past scouting reports, you can see he's gone from being like a 65 home run 70 eye guy. Now he's a 60 home run 55 eye guy. So even then his eyes dropped 10 uh, just in the last off season or so. You can see that in the past uh, scouting reports. So uh, I think it's time to move on. And um, the fact is we, um, we have... Um, what I believe to be an adequate replacement for him. Um, and also the fact that his personality class is outspoken isn't super great either. So yeah, we're going to trade him. We're going to trade away Hunter Bishop. And we are also going to trade away Joe Panic, who we signed on a minor league deal, so no harm there. Um, and in return, we're going to get Brad Peacock. Uh, two years of him uh, left on his contract. Astros will cover 60%, and he will uh, be our fifth starter going into this season so I think that just really shores up the rotation and I feel like we can replace uh, Okimi by uh, having Calhoun DH for us and having uh, Gavin Sheets be our starting first baseman so let's go for it. So with those trades made and everything now concrete as far as our opening day roster let's go ahead and see who will actually be a part of that. So we have Jason Castro who will start at catcher against right-handed pitching. Perez will start against lefties. Gavin Sheets becomes our new first baseman full-time, so uh, big ups to him. He had a great spring training. He hit well in AAA last year, and um, yeah, now I feel like it's time for him to really get a shot at it. Yon Mankata will, of course, return of our, as our second baseman. He's a monster. Eduardo Nunez, I've actually signed on a minor league deal and decided to bring up uh, he will kind of just serve as your general bench bat, if anything. And he has, you know, he can play the infield a little bit, so that's not too bad. Swanson returns at your third baseman. Simmons will be your opening day shortstop. Uh, Ingel Vilma, he is day-to-day uh, -day right now, but he's all right to go. He has awesome, uh, he can play short third base and second base at a high level. That's why I have him, so he's a pretty great uh, utility guy to have. Jimenez will start at left field. I don't know what his long-term future is with us because uh, Steel Walker is really breathing down his neck for that left field spot. I'll, let me tell you guys. Uh, Gabriel Misiel, he will be our utility outfielder. Blake Rutherford will be our starting center fielder. Ian Happ, right field. Willie Calhoun, DH. He moves from first base to DH. So uh, your lineup will look like this. It'll go Rutherford, Hap, Moncada, Calhoun, Sheets, Jimenez, Swanson, Castro, Simmons. And against lefties, it'll be a little bit different. It'll go Rutherford, Swanson, Moncada, Calhoun, Jimenez, Sheets, Hap, Perez, Simmons. So it's a pretty strong lineup, I feel. Let's get to the pitching now. Here's what your pitching setup looks like. We have Norhe Ruiz as our ace. His ratings have come along substantially. He's kind of a late bloomer, if anything, as far as these ratings go. But uh, he, I mean, he's definitely one of the best pitchers in the league. I'll, I'll leave it at that. He was a monster last year, and hopefully he picks up right where he left off. Sonny Gray will be our second pitcher. This is uh, his last year before a team option next year, so uh, his performance will pretty much be hinging on whether we pick up that team option for $8 million or not. 
Daniel Norris will be our third arm in the rotation. Uh, he earned this from pitching pretty well last year for us. So, uh, yeah, he will be the number three. Uh, Adber Alzole will be number four. Recent trade acquisition. He, uh, he's got some nice ratings. He's got a nice arsenal of pitches, and I think the fourth spot is good for him. And in the fifth spot, we have the newly acquired Brad Peacock. So uh, it's it honestly looks like a pretty solid rotation to me. There's not, you know, none of these guys I'm too, you know, worried about. There's no, like, weak points. Uh, the bullpen, if there's anything on the team, is kind of what we have to be worried about because uh, we have Max Fried in there. He will be our long reliever slash emergency starting pitcher. Freddie Peralta is a long reliever as well. In middle relief, we have Funkhauser, Alcantara, Corey Guerin, and our stoppers are Brian Clark and Jace Fry. So that sort of settles everything that we have on the Major League roster for now. I would like to go ahead and maybe just look at AAA right now. Steel Walker starts season in AAA. Who knows um, where he goes after that. But uh, Shea Langliers, he's damn close. He probably just needs some AAA plate appearances, and then he'll be ready to go. And then Blaze Alexander, uh, he's, you know, he's got great potential still, but I think he needs some time to grow in, in AAA. So I think Simmons will probably start at, at the very least the majority of the year. Um, but yeah, we're excited about Alexander for sure. He's still only 21, so uh, we're going to take our time with him. But Langliers, uh, I mean, his, his ratings are really nice. I would just like to see him get, you know, some AAA played appearances. Then we could get him under the, you know, service time uh, rules too. We can have him. So... Uh, yeah, expect Lingoliers up soon. Expect Walker up if I decide to trade Jimenez at any point. Because uh, Jimenez needs to perform this year or else it's going to be Steel Walker uh, as our left fielder because he is uh, really something. He's He looks like he could be just as good as Jimenez. So, uh, yeah, we'll get uh, that out of the way. Now let us look at the um, sort of the projections for this year so we can get a good idea of what we are expecting around the league. Okay, we are here with the preseason predictions right now. The White Sox are actually only projected to go 81 and 81 this year, so uh, we're going to hope that those are uh, incorrect for our sake. Uh, we don't have anyone slated to come up as a top hitter for us, although Rees is projected to be the fifth best pitcher in the American League. That's pretty good. He's in good company with guys like David Price, Bumgarner, Chris Archer, and Barrios, so... Uh, yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. I mean, I think he Ruiz has really grown into something quite fast. We pretty much fleeced Oakland uh, on that deal. What exactly was that trade again? We sent away Fontana, um, Marco Martinez, Jose Mario Garcia, Nate Nolan. Yeah, that's the that's the fleecing of a generation uh, right there. <laughs> uh, feel bad for them. But um, yeah, so we are projected to go 81 and 81, which would be fourth in the division. Uh, I have the suspicions that we can do much better than that, but it's it's our pitching that they don't really like. They feel like we're going to allow a fair amount of runs. So, uh, in the National League, who stands out? The Dodgers are projected to win 100 games. Bellinger is projected to be the best hitter. Syndergaard is projected to be the best pitcher. Uh, who's projected to win the most games in the American League? Uh, that would be the Astros. So, actually, interestingly enough, I look at the American League. So, the Astros are projected to win 94 as they're slated to be the best team and then pretty much everyone apart from the Tigers so like the 14th best team uh, would be the Blue Jays at 72 and 90 so a, a good bit of parity in this league not too much between uh, the top teams and sort of the middling teams or the mediocre teams it seems like uh, and then actually a little bit uh, pretty similar though to be honest uh, I mean I'd see the Dodgers at 100 wins but uh, the Reds at 69 projected wins are projected to be your worst team so yeah that does it for your preseason uh, predictions. Let's take a look at top minor league systems now. The Chicago White Sox are ranked 15th with 51 points as far as the top minor league systems go. I think that is underrating us pretty hard, to be honest with you guys. Uh, the, the problem is that, it, is that OSA mostly decides these sort of things, so when you get a few years into the sim, uh, that's based off OSA is going to be a lot of those uh, rankings. So Blaze Alexander, 32nd ranked prospect. Shea Langlier's 36th ranked prospect. He should probably be, you know, in the top 10 easily. And Sam Bagwell is the 46th ranked uh, prospect. He was our first round selection last year. So, um, but we do have a, a lot more exciting prospects besides uh, those three. So let's go ahead and get to uh, our prospects list because there has been some interesting progress over the offseason that I would like to show you guys. 
Okay, here is our current prospects list. Ignacio Fierro is a pretty big deal. <laughs> power hitting prospect, 80 uh, contact and 80 uh, home run power potential. He really doesn't look like he can do anything in the field, but uh, the, the guy can mash, and he was an international amateur signing for us uh, in 2020. So we're going to start him in uh, rookie ball this year with the uh, Dominican League team. And um, despite the fact that he is still a young 17, uh, this is definitely the right move with his 45 contact and 45 home run power already. So pretty scary guy. Uh, the personality ratings are a bummer, though. <laughs> uh, he means he might be hard to get along with. Jared Jones has come down a lot in terms of his projected ratings, so I don't know how much longer he is for this list, but he was our third round pick last year for what it's worth. Uh, James Bell is another player who, you know, uh, I, I do like his ratings. Uh, I feel like he could be, if he was a better defensive catcher, I'd be more excited about him. But uh, yeah, he starts the season in A-ball. Trevor Cads, another guy who is uh, still pretty uh, underwhelming compared to some of the other guys in the system but he will start in A-ball as well. Jared Campbell starts in A-ball. Again, not uh, one of the bigger deal prospects. Van Kohler, uh, he actually is, you know, his rings look decent enough, but he is 23 years old, so he will start in A-ball after finishing in A-ball last year. I've actually decided to go Jean Carvajal in A-ball to start the year. I'm not sure if that's the right move. His ratings don't seem like he's quite A-ball ready, but um, he hit well in his... Uh, in, in rookie ball last year. Well, you know what? He didn't hit that well for the majority of it. So I actually think it'd probably be for the best if he starts the season in rookie ball. I'll send him to the Dominican League. It'll probably be for the best for him. But he's uh, we traded for him this past offseason, and uh, his ratings are down a bit as far as the projections go. Sam Bagwell, we talked about top 100 prospect for us, first-round selection, looking like he is going to be a pretty solid starting pitcher if he gets a... Uh, his control up and his changeup up, so those are two things we're going to be watching with him for sure. Uh, Tim Kate is unfortunately still hurt from that surgery, and I think that surgery really uh, hurts his uh, long-term outlook as a prospect, uh, which is unfortunate. Then we have Thomas Dillard, who we just traded for. Uh, Lee Friere, who is, uh, you know, one other just sort of middling outfielder, isn't he? Pimentel. His ratings are down quite a bit too. He he was rated something like three and a half, three and a half star, four star potential at some point, uh, but that that contact has come down a good bit. He's still got the eye, the discipline, but uh, yeah, not too not as psyched as I was about him at at one point. Uh, if you want some good news, Mason Denenberg's come along quite a good bit. So he, he's a one and a half star starting pitcher now, and he's gonna start the year in Double A for us. Um, I still don't know if he's a starting pitcher long term, but I feel like he could be a really good reliever if not. Trent DeVoe starts season double A, uh, just a completely you know mediocre hitter, but I mean he can def he can he can play defense and he has 80 speed and 80 stealing. So for that reason alone, uh, you can still be excited about him. Uh, Sam Dexter, and then we have Joe Gray Jr. Joe Gray Jr. still looking like he could be one of the premier prospects to come through this system. He has uh, a, he's an above average hitter. That strikeouts are a problem, but I mean, 55 home run power potential, 55 uh, eye potential, and already the fact that he has his gap power up to 60 with the speed of 70. I mean, he could be a real doubles machine, which is awesome. He plays great defense in center. He's fast. Uh, besides the strikeouts, there's really not a weakness in his game, so he's a guy I'm super stoked about, and he starts in double A. Blaze Alexander, those ratings just need to come along a bit more. I think uh, if if we could, if you could get that contact up to like 45, uh, that would be a, a big difference maker. But until then, he's not ready for the majors yet, I don't think. And then uh, Cody Deason, he's also uh, had quite the off season. He he's um, you know, he, he needs innings in, in AAA, in my opinion, but he's he's pretty close to being able to be a starting pitcher in this league. And uh, I'm stoked about him, for sure. I'm glad we traded for him this past offseason. What were the details of that trade again to review? We sent away Zach Birdie, uh, Garrett Frechette, Axel Alexo, who, you know, I think Alexo is going to be really good, and then Guerrero, so... Uh, we're definitely we're definitely gonna miss Alexo and man his his ratings have come up actually as far as his hitting goes so uh, I, I said I think Alexo can be a star but 
the return was also pretty good in the form of Adbear, Azale, Steel Walker, as well as Cody Deason. So these can be young, cross-controlled, good players for us for many years to come, hopefully. Lingaliers is close. He's damn close. He's the best prospect in our system. Steel Walker, uh, also damn close. Gavin Sheets, Major League to start the year. So uh, that's everybody who we have in our minor league system worth noting. Before we do get to um, opening day, however, I would like to just go over a few front office things. So we're going to talk about our owner, Jerry Reinsdorf, who's now 85, and his goals for us, uh, both in the short term and long term. So uh, he wants us to reach the playoffs uh, this year. He wants us to upgrade at left field. Right now, uh, he wants to see either some improvement from Eloy Jimenez, or uh, if necessary, that may mean Steel Walker call up. He wants us to improve our stolen bases, so I'm going to mess with the game strategy a little bit to make sure some of our faster players are encouraged to steal bases. He wants to increase the attendance uh, as a long-term goal. He wants us to improve our draft record as a long-term goal, which I think is he'll be okay. We'll be able to accrue uh, a good bit of war with Langoliers and um, Alexander and maybe uh, a few others um, as far as uh, our draft record goes. So by 2024, we should be able to do that. And uh, long term, he wants us to reach the World Series. He is pretty pleased with us so far. I can understand. We pretty much surprised and won 98 games last year. So, um, yeah, that's what we have going there. And then I would—I just thought I haven't really done it. Um, I haven't showed this like all series, but it's, it's something I should be in the habit of showing. But we still have a pretty cheap uh, payroll, as you guys can see. Uh, right now, we are paying all our players 60 million total. So um, most of them are, you know, pre-arb. And then we've got Gudwan, who's on 800k. Guerin, Perez, Norris are each at about 1.5 million. And then we have Swanson, Mats, Peacock, Mankata, Hap. Those guys are making, you know, multiple millions. Sunny Gray is pretty high paid. Castro is uh, 7.5 million. And then Simmons on that one year 13 million deal which uh, I'm still pretty happy about, even though that obviously makes him the highest paid player on the team. Uh, he will fit that gap at shortstop well, while uh, Blaze Alexander figures things out in AAA. So, yes, that is sort of the full overview of the team and what we are dealing with going into opening day. So let's go ahead and play at Seattle. Okay, it's time for opening day against Seattle. Hopefully we can actually win on opening day, which is something I haven't managed to do yet. Uh, you can see their lineup right there. It's uh, it's pretty mediocre. No one is too scary in there, uh, I don't think. James Paxton on the mound, though, he's a pretty great pitcher, so we will have to hopefully get some runs on the board against him. Him being a lefty means that our lineup is a little bit different than if it were against a righty. So, for example, Salvador Perez starts and Swanson moves up to second in the lineup. Norhe Ruiz, our ace, takes the mound. And uh, yes, let us get this show on the road. Okay, Blake Rutherford leading off the season. Let's see what happens. And he's hit it high and deep. Can we start the season with a home run? Yes, we can. Excellent. On the second pitch of the season, Blake Rutherford goes yard and Chicago leads one to nothing. Excellent. Okay, after Rutherford's solo home run, Ruiz takes the mound to face off against Greg Howe and promptly strikes him out, so excellent job there. Okay, Segura has found his way to third base, two outs. Can Ruiz get out of this unscathed? Yes, he can with the strikeout. Excellent pitching. Chicago leads one to nothing going into the second. Salby walks, so runner in scoring position with two outs for Simmons. And that looks like it's going to squeeze through. Do we want to send Hap? Uh, might as well with two outs, right? I know obviously there's some, uh, some reasons not to. And he's safe, so we lead to nothing. Excellent. Okay, here's Gavin Sheets getting a single now, and that will drive in Jimenez. So... Gavin Sheets with his first hit and RBI. Hopefully we get a lot of that this year, as the Mariners have already decided to break, take out Paxton, so he gets yanked early in the top of the third. 
Segura hits it deep into the gap. And that looks like it may score a run, and it will. Segura with the RBI double as the Mariners are now on the board with their first hit as well. Joe Rizzo with Cano on second, and we are able to get out of the inning, so 3-1 to one through 4. Jimenez hits it pretty well, but it looks like that will be caught to end the top of the fifth. Simmons unfortunately hitting into the double play there. That ends the top of the sixth. Yes, he can with the strikeout. Excellent job. White Sox still lead, 3-1. to one. Norhe Ruiz on the mound to start the seventh. Jesse Jenner singles off. The f no out. Looks like it'll be a double, actually. So extra bases for Jenner. And I'm thinking that is it for Ruiz. Only 89 pitches, but... Uh, I think uh, with some lefties coming up in the order, it would be a good idea to bring in Max Fried. So Max Fried now makes his first appearance for the White Sox since uh, 2019. He missed all of last year with injury. Let's see how he responds. Easy strikeout there. Now I get Segura. Gets the strikeout there. Now it's up to Shane Potter. Looks like Shane Potter is going to fly out. So excellent piece of pitching there by Max Fried on his return. We are glad to have him back, whether that is in the rotation or the bullpen in this case. Calhoun sits it pretty far, but it looks like it's going to be tracked down. So 3-1, to one, we go to the bottom of the ninth. Can we close this game out? I am bringing in Corey Guerin to face off against the righty Marte. That's a strikeout. Now he will face Jesse Jenner. Jesse Jenner hits it to Moncada. So that's two quick outs right there. Now against the lefty Greg Howe, I think I am going to leave Guerin in. And it's just a weak ground out, and that'll do it. Guerin gets the save. White Sox win 3-1 to one on opening day. And uh, yes, thank you guys for following the series. I will see you all at the midseason, probably with a different roster configuration. So looking forward to seeing it, and uh, I will see you guys then. Peace.